lot of far-right groups are different than maybe traditional conservative groups. Far-right, and especially fascist movements, tend to be much more revolutionary and messianic. They don't just want to keep society stable. They want to, they want to restructure it in their vision. So it started with uh, this guy, Richard Spencer. Boop! He came up with the name Alt-Right, Alternative Right, and I like this guy. The Alternative Right is a rebranding of paleoconservatism, white nationalism, all these different things. They uh, started as a fascist movement, I think pretty clearly. They uh, emerged at a time when the fascist movement was resetting itself in its um, aesthetic and cultural references. One of the things that they've been able to do is they're saying like, look, we look good, we have nice haircuts, you know, we're not these kind of classical skinhead types or people wearing clan robes, you know, we're something different and the media has really gone gaga over that. You remind me like of a, of a young, gay, alive Christopher Hitchens. Even amongst the fascist part of the alt-right, there's a more neo-Nazi wing around Andrew Anglin and the Daily Stormer. The Muslim hordes, we fought these people for how long? And now we invite them in and give them free everything so they can rape women on the streets. And then there's the more uh, fascist but not explicitly Nazi wing around the National Policy Institute and Richard Spencer. To be white is to be a striver, a crusader, an explorer and a conqueror. We don't exploit other groups. They need us and not the other way around. The alt-right scene, I suppose, is a bit of a gateway into kind of more violent and extreme uh, fascism. Recently, uh, it, the movement has expanded and attracted a lot of people. So we get people like Gavin McGuinness, who's one of the founders of Vice magazine. Why is blackface offensive? And people who promote it, such as Milo uh, Yiannopoulos. This is a new populist, conservative, and libertarian movement that is going nowhere so long as the left continues to prioritize Muslim feelings over gay lives. So long as the left continues to prioritize the feelings of sociopathic feminist bitches over everybody else. The group that they want to inoculate and organize is largely college-educated, upper-middle-class, straight men. People who are very um, sort of social media savvy, people who are very tech savvy. They love their like, memes. Groups like American Vanguard or Identity Europa are blanketing campuses across the country with posters. And so it's attracted a lot of people, a lot of people in college Republican groups who are not explicit white nationalists, but they like a lot of the, the, the tenor and the style of the alt-right. If you look at Richard Spencer just this week, it's come out that he makes literally millions of dollars every year because his parents own a cotton farm in Louisiana in this hugely impoverished area of the country. That's a huge contradiction because most white people are not wealthy in this country. Most white people have to get up and go to work. They're, they don't get money from their parents growing a cotton plantation where black people used to work as slaves and that's why they're rich. It's a very fractured group. There's not necessarily a center to it. They're not united and they all kind of bicker with each other. And that's exactly where we want them to stay. This side cares about Western chauvinism and ideas. This side says whites have to be a part of this. Someone like Rushby, who self-identifies as a pickup artist, he's a real piece of shit, who wrote an article about raping an Icelandic woman. We've also got members of like the alt-right scene who use the myth of the rape refugee, so the refugee who you know is a danger to our women. So they're still incredibly like uh, gender essentialist notions of womanhood, but they, they'd be at odds with, for example, someone who boasts about raping women. Matthew Heinbach has definitely written the wave of the alt-right, but what makes Heinbach different is that he is interested, even though he himself comes from a very wealthy community outside of Washington, D.C., it's called Poolsville, he's very interested in talking to everyday poor and disaffected white people, trying to build a neo-Nazi base uh, within that. The Traditionalist Worker Party, they're very open that they are neo-Nazi. The Patriot Movement is the successor to the 1990s militia movement, who are famous for uh, forming paramilitary groups around the United States and two of its adherents bombing the Oklahoma City Federal Building uh, in 1995. The movement historically tends to be in a reverse cycle with Democratic presidents. They have a whole narrative about how the president is, a, is really a communist who's a secret traitor to the country and he's about to let foreign uh, armies invade. The major organization is the Oath Keepers. They recruit current and former uh, military police and first responders. There's another group of sheriffs and other law enforcement called the CSPOA, the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. There's a decentralized uh, version of militias called the Three Percenters. And then there's sovereign citizens who believe in some of these uh, sort of alternative legal theories based on a kind of crackpot reading of, of the law and of history. A free inhabitant 
is 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 uh, they are allowed to they are they're free people they um have all of the all of the rights of a u.s citizen without following any of their laws well that would just be pure anarchy nope. if that were the case no. A Breitbart is interesting because it's become a major media player fairly recently, and um, it has positioned itself firmly to the right of Fox News. And so this has helped drive things further to the right, and then clearly with their, their former head being in the Trump cabinet now, they're almost acting as a semi-official media wing of the current Trump administration. People hear stuff from kind of the insurgent far right about, for instance, like Syrian refugees in Sweden raping white women, which is not true. And then Trump basically parrots these things or speaks to them or dog whistles to them or just repeats them as fact. It's not about truth, it's about projecting uh, force into the conversation. It's about you know, saying, you know, fuck you, it's about refugees, or fuck you, it's about, you know, men being attacked in society by feminism. So it creates this kind of like potential insurgent base, and I think that's the scariest part.